In this nugget, we cover Active Directory sites. This will be an overview. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's take a look at sites and how all of this works. Now, the main idea with sites is that we want to use prudent network utilization. This becomes m uh, very relative depending upon the kind of network utilization you have. For example, uh, one time I did some live training about Active Directory and sites. And this is a few years back. And um, one of the guys came up to me after, after the course, or I think, actually, I think it was at lunch, and he said, hey, you know what? I work for, it was a major phone carrier. You know, they have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the, the internet backbone. They own, actually, most of it all the way across the country, or large parts of it. And he said, you know, we have sites in all these different cities, and he kind of drew on the whiteboard with me some, some of the different sites they've had and everything. And he said, we have all the bandwidth we want. We have the backbone. <laughs> we, we're not starving for any kind of bandwidth. So why wouldn't I be able to put all of my domain controllers in a single site, even though they're physically dispersed? <laughs> well, that's actually a good question. Maybe he could. You still have to be prudent about how you use your network traffic, even if you have lots of it. After all, we were imprudent about how we used other things, such as... Oh, you know, IP version 4 addresses. <laughs> and now we're out of them. So, so uh, you, you don't think you're ever going to run out, but sometimes you do. On the other hand, uh, on the other side of that spectrum, I had a guy who came to me a while back. I, I was in, up in Montana, one of my favorite places to be. And I was in Montana t teaching a course, and he said, we have our, uh, what's the name of that town? Kalispell is the capital, I think. Kalispell. <laughs> and uh, that's the capital of of Montana, if I remember right, but he said that's where they were located, but they had all kinds of tiny little sites uh, where, where all the way around. The, the state has these tiny little sites all in these different locations, and a lot of them are very, very slow. Uh, they're either WAN links or they're modem connections. Uh, they're just always on, and that's because some of the places where they have to communicate are very, very remote, low speed, and uh, you know there might only be a few people that even populate the town. It's kind of a light color, isn't it? Maybe I should make this darker. Uh, so anyway, uh, we just want to use prudent network utilization. And in a situation like where you are with Kalispell, you're going to have to be much more careful about how that is all utilized. Uh, the other thing we can have here uh, is that we want to also make sure that it mirrors our exchange sites. Okay, and that's very often what happens. When you have a site for Active Directory replication, Exchange it kind of uh, overlays that and, and uses that same site and the same utilization. So an exchange site is also going to be your Active Directory site and vice versa. And you're going to use those sites to route the mail. Uh, other things can use this as well, such as uh, System Center Configuration Manager, uh, DFS, Domain Controller auth Authentication. Uh, that can all be site aware so that, for example, I don't want to uh, be a user uh, here in Phoenix and log, on, and log on to a domain controller here locally uh, normally most of the time, but I don't want to somehow all of a sudden be logging on to a domain controller in Singapore. <laughs> well, how would that happen? Well, that's going to happen if I don't have prudent, uh, you know, prudent site layout here. Also, various applications can use sites, like I said before, you know, SCCM and other third parties as well. Other technologies use it. Uh, a lot of different things are site aware, and they'll make prudent use of your network utilization based upon the sites. And then, as I mentioned, there was that guy that worked for a telecommunications company. He had all high-speed WANs, so... <laughs> Uh, there's really not as significant of an issue, but you still have to be, be prudent about it. Now, the configuration of this, and I'll demonstrate this for you coming up, but the overall idea here is, first of all, you want to re rename the default first site name. Uh, Microsoft just names it that because they don't know what your sites are called. They don't know if it's Phoenix or London or whatever your site's called. So you rename that usually to whatever your hub is, your headquarters, or to a major, uh, a major site where you probably plop all of your first domain controllers into. Then you'll create other sites that mirror your geographical sites. You don't have to do it that way exactly all the time. Uh, kind of part of that depends upon the speed of your WAN links. But most of the time, that's probably what it's going to fall along. And then you plop your domain controllers into the sites that you've created. I say plop. That's a technical term that you should all memorize. Anyway, so you, you just drag the DC, the domain controls. Actually, right click and choose move to move those domain controllers into a more appropriate site. And then what you'll do is you'll create subnets associated with those sites. This means that uh, here, for example, if I'm in these, this site right here, you know, I'm in, in Phoenix, and maybe Phoenix is my, you know, 10.10.10.0 uh, network, you know, 24-bit subnet mask, and Tucson is 10.10.11.0. 
on a 24-bit subnet mask. And Bisbee, maybe they're on a, on a you know, 192.168.1.0 24-bit subnet mask. Uh, what I'll do is I'll associate subnets with each one of my sites here, and that way if a user logs on here in Bisbee, or tries to log on here in Bisbee, uh, it's going to associate the IP address of their local computer, uh, which hopefully DHCP has issued it, something in the same range of addresses, and it's going to say, hey, you're in the Bisbee site based upon your IP address, therefore we're going to refer you to the local domain controller here in Bisbee. It's not going to send me to Phoenix, not going to send me to Tucson. Uh, unless there's a timeout, that domain controller is down or something, and then it can use other methods. And we can use things like a uh, site link cost and things, which we'll discuss a little bit later on uh, coming up here. So anyway, uh, we'll create subnets associated with those sites. And then one thing you want to do is to be careful to check the replication. There's a lot of different tools you can use for that. And in our upcoming nugget here on managing Active Directory and sysvol replication, all of that stuff, uh, we'll talk more about how to check that, how to trigger replication, and so on. And then you want to configure your cost and schedule. This is going to be relative to what we have here where we have different bandwidth speeds across our networks. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to do the, the site link cost and all of that, but uh, it's going to be relative to your, your speed. So uh, normally it's going to be 100, 100 is the cost, the site link cost, and it's going to be true on all of the site links by default. Uh, but that's going uh, to tell Active Directory that all of these are equally fast. So what you might want to do is to set up a different kind of a value system. The lower the site link cost, the more it's going to be used. So maybe this one's you know 25, a site link cost of 25. This one's twice as expensive, so to speak, as this one is. So maybe I'd set this one up at 50, and this one's 10 times as expensive. So maybe this would be 250. Okay, uh, and it's a little bit relative. There, some people have used different kinds of formulas for scaling that out and everything like that. But it's all it's all relative and. It's, it's somewhat according to what your own requirements are. And you can also see how this could be useful because uh, let's say that my domain controller in Bisbee failed and my user's trying to log on, their computer's trying to log on, the user's trying to log on. Uh, what could it do? Well, it could try to log on to Phoenix, uh, but that's a site link cost of 250. So instead, it's going to try to log on to a domain controller in Tucson. Okay. Uh, and then if you had the unlikely situation, but it's still, I suppose, possible, where not only was the Bisbee domain controller down, but also the, the Tucson domain controller was down, then instead of going to Phoenix again, it wouldn't use this one megabit per second at a cost of 250. It would go 50 plus 25. That's only a, a cost of 75. So it would still go in this little bit of a circuitous route, but still faster than our one megabit per second. And then you'll want to configure site link bridges, but only if necessary. So... Uh, for example, once again here, if we're not fully routed, then we might need to do that. So let me try to clean up here a little bit. And let's say that we've got you know, a route between Phoenix and Tucson and a route between uh, Bisbee and Tucson, but that's it. We don't have a route between Bisbee and Phoenix. Uh, if that's the case, and I need to contact servers of some type or another here that are site aware in Bisbee, uh, excuse me, in Phoenix, then I'm going to need to be able to bridge this site link. In other words, I need Bisbee to know that it can go to Tucson to get to Phoenix. And that's where I'll create a, a site link bridge. And I'll show you how to do that as well here coming up shortly. All right, I know I said I was going to demonstrate some of that stuff, but I'm going to have to save that for the next nugget so that this one doesn't get too long. Uh, here we covered Active Directory sites. This was an overview. Stick around for the next nugget where I actually do the demos. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.